Hello everyone, my name is Roger Fari and I would like to welcome you to another video. In this video, we are going to focus on the concept of CRISPR, Cross Industry Standard Process for Data Mining. And uh, we are going to, um, you know, have a short video. We are going to go over this framework together. And uh, in the next video, what we are going to do is we are going to, um, you know, go over this framework one more time. But that time, we are going to do it within a case study, right? So this first one is going to be more conceptual. The second one is going to be more hands-on, all right? So let's get started. Uh, a little bit of history, more, you know, first is that in 1997, the Community Research and Development Information Service under the European Commission funded uh, research and development to create this cross-industry standard process for data mining, right? So it's uh, it has a you know sort of kind of a long history as far as you know the development of data mining, and it has been around as a guiding source for whoever wants to engage in data mining and be able to uh, have successful projects, right? So the framework itself, um, you know, is is sort of like a round uh, sort of like process that starts from business understanding and can can lead to successful de deployment, right? So this is the framework. It has business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation, and there are some interactions among these uh, sort of like, you know, stages. We're going to talk about each of these uh, one by one in a short, in this short video, right? So let's get started with um, sort of the background here and you know, what enables data mining, which is data. As you can see, this framework is around data and without data we won't be able to do anything so that's where that sits it's like around data right so around that data we have to start with business understanding and there is a lot of taking this too lightly when it comes to business understanding everyone like oh, okay i have business understanding but really do you have this business understanding that's the question and for you to be able to so we confirm that you actually do have the business understanding. I have come up with uh, these five questions. If you are capable of answering these five questions about the project you are about to engage, um, then you could say you have business understanding. Like I said, in the next video, we're going to actually go over these questions and talk about them within a case study. But for now, uh, what I have to say is don't take business understanding too lightly. Uh, you would have to be able to answer these questions, right? So. We'll come back to this, these questions in the next video. Anyway, then from business understanding, we go to data understanding. Data understanding, again, um, if you look at an Excel spreadsheet, if you've looked at you know, some of the sum, uh, some summarizing visualization of your data, does this mean you have a data understanding? And the answer to that question is not necessarily. Uh, with data understanding also, you would have to be able to answer these nine questions for you to make sure that you do have the data understanding before going to the next step, which is data preparation. However, like I said, I'm not gonna go into depth about these questions because we don't have a case study uh, to talk about them. Um, in the next video, we're gonna do that, right? So we come back to this question. Next. So now let's talk a little bit about the interaction between business understanding and data understanding. Of course, for us to be able to even start making sense of the data, we have to understand where the data comes from, like what is, what is being collected, right? And when we do that, when we go and do the practice of data understanding, it, it teaches us more about the business understanding. And this loop can you know, sort of like circle for you to not only improve your data understanding, but also your business understanding. And this is a good practice. I mean, uh, you don't have to just like, you know, do this business understanding, data understanding once to go to data preparation. This literally can happen uh, a lot so many times uh, before maybe you're ready to go to data preparation, right? So now let's talk about data preparation. Data preparation is basically, um, you know, consists of you, for you to be able to clean and wrangle the data and then integrate them. And then once that integration is done, for you to be able to clean, massage, uh, transform the data to get to a data set that is capable of uh, sort of like helping you with your modeling, which is the next step in CRISPR uh, framework, right? So 
from data preparation, modeling, and evaluation, there is a specific um, kind of like an interaction here, right? So uh, I did talk about data preparation, but now I want to like talk about this whole mechanism from data preparation, modeling, and evaluation. And even though there is an interaction from modeling to evaluation, however, um, this whole thing has to sort of like, you know, be looked at at the same time. Here's why. When we prepare the data, we want to give the model the best chance. And when we evaluate the model that we created by the data, prepared data, that's when we understand if the model and also the data preparation was successful, right? So uh, we may have to go all the way to evaluation and then come back and you know start working on data preparation again to make sure that this data preparation modeling and evaluation is successful, right? So there is a specific dynamic here that you want to pay attention. Uh, and of course, the evaluation part is very important, right? It is at this stage that uh, we decide if we have been able to create a minimum viable product or a proof of concept. Basically, this means we have been able to prepare our data and model it in a way that is going to be useful for us, right? So if we uh, get to that point, evaluate and say, yes, we do have a proof of concept, um, or no, we don't have a proof of concept or a minimum viable product, then, uh, you know, based on the answer to that, then we would move either towards sort of like coming back when we don't have a proof of concept or a minimum viable product, then we would have to sort of like go back to a drawing board, start, you know, this practice gave us more understanding about the business. Maybe we start over, maybe like, you know, sort of scrap the project or we sort of like, you know, downsize it or like, you know, give it a new angle that is going to be sort of like eventually get us to a point that our evaluation tells us that our data mining model and the process and data preparation has given us a minimum viable product. And when we do have that minimum viable product, that's when we move to deployment. Uh, deployment is its own beast. It's a very important part of a successful data solution lifecycle. And the CRISP DM uh, framework doesn't emphasize on it as much. It looks as if that once you're done with evaluation, the deployment is just piece of cake, but that could not be far further from the truth. And in one of my future videos, I'm going to talk about data, uh, data solution lifecycle. And in there, I have a specific segment uh, about uh, deployment. And we will see how deployment looks like and uh, you know the, the difference between uh, what we do when we prepare the data to model and evaluate and what we do to prepare the data for deployment. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is going to be this cyclic um, sort of like continuous cycle around this process, right? Even, even when we do have a successful deployment, this successful deployment of a data solution, a data mining model delivered to whoever can use it will change the business itself, right? So it can create new problems. It can create new situations that can be helped by data mining. And that is why there is this you know, continuous cyclic around CRISP-DM, right? So in this video, we talked about uh, the CRISP-DM, uh, uh, what it is and you know how it's useful uh, conceptually. Um, in the next video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over this framework one more time but that time I'm going to use a case study. I'm going to go like get deeper, a little bit deeper on each of these um, stages and the interactions. All right, until that.